Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 12th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from, as usual, Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote up a diary analyzing a recent info stealer he came across. The info stealer took advantage of a couple common and not malicious tools to bypass detection. First of all, it used the good old bits admin binary to download a tool called nsudo. Bits admin, of course, very famous. It's uh, used to download uh, Windows patches, but it can also be used uh, just like curl or wget on Unix systems to download arbitrary files via HTTP. Now, nsudo, not so commonly installed on a Windows system, but as the name implies, it's kind of the Windows version of sudo. Now, works different. It sort of allows you to run commands at different privileges, either from a little GUI tool or on the command line. And that's sort of how the tool was used here by the malicious code. Now, the script that uh, the user here first initially ran after downloading nsudo checks if it's actually able to run without alerting the user because UAC may otherwise pop up warnings. If there is no warning, then uh, the script will be used to adjust various system settings before downloading the actual info stealer malware. The info stealer uh, will exfiltrate a screenshot of the system, the system's location. So kind of the standard things that info stealers exfiltrate browser configuration. Also, sort of of interest may give us a hint as to who the attacker is. It also appears to be interested in gaming applications like Steam and Minecraft. And as I said many times before, I usually do not cover breaches here in this podcast unless we learn something from it. One nice educational example this week was a breach of Cisco. Cisco uh, created a pretty thorough write-up explaining how the attacker breached them and how the attacker was discovered before too much damage happened. I find the, there are two interesting lessons here about the initial access that are worthwhile to communicate to your users. First of all, the attacker obtained VPN credentials by breaching the victim's Google account. The victim had password syncing enabled. So after breaching the Google account, the attacker was able to get the victim's username and password for their VPN. Now, before you say, hey, shouldn't they have done two-factor authentication? Yes, they did two-factor authentication. And that's sort of where the second part came in then. The two-factor was implemented via one of those apps where the user gets a pop-up and is being asked to approve the access. So the attacker logged in using username and password and then actually called the victim and asked the victim, pretending they are from some kind of uh, sysadmin or whatever, uh, to click OK on that pop-up. And that's how the attacker then gained access. So the two things really communicate here is you probably shouldn't store your credentials in the browser itself, use a password safe. And then if you're using the password safe to sync passwords across different devices, which is of course one of the features that a lot of people need to use uh, with these password safes, then make sure that when adding a new device, two-factor authentication is required. And then secondly, users have to be aware that they will not receive a phone call asking them to approve the second factor if you're using one of those pop-up uh, apps. In general, those pop-up apps don't seem to be the right solution really for sort of these higher security uh authentication issues like VPNs, you probably rather want to do something like a rolling token or such uh, that uh, is less likely than being shared or also being approved accidentally. And security researcher Joel Garcia Santisma Trinidad from Secura released details regarding an important 
but also pretty embarrassing flaw in Avanti's uh, Pulse Secure, Pulse Connect Secure. That's this VPN product that had many, many bugs in the past, caused a lot of problems. Apparently, this particular bug affects versions before 9.1 R12. And so far, Avanti has not publicly confirmed the bug, but uh, it's a privilege escalation vulnerability and a very simple one at that. If you have a read-only admin role, you can actually go to a web page and it's uh, outlined in Joel's blog here, just really where you find uh, this web page and the administrator password will be inside the HTML source. One of those vulnerabilities, we show them in our defending web application class and people always think, well, uh, nobody's ever going to be so stupid and going to do this. Let me also have an update from Cisco that's worthwhile talking about. It affects the ASA and firepower devices and uh, this vulnerability could lead to an attacker being able to read private RSA keys. Patches for this vulnerability are available. Well, that's it uh, for uh, today. One little thing about uh, DEF CON Black Hat. Suppose there will be a talk tomorrow uh, on Friday revealing a pretty severe flaw with the SDKs in many home routers. Uh, you may want to over the weekend uh, double check for updates for your home router uh, just to make sure. Not sure if this will actually be patched uh, that quickly. I think it's a well known vulnerability actually, but apparently still affects a lot of uh, these devices and hasn't been uh, patched yet. So uh, double check that. No details yet. Like I said, I only have seen sort of a pre announcement of this. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.